Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations. And even though I don't have a fun video intro today, that is not going to stop me from sharing this fun Tumblr tutorial with you guys. So today's tutorial is basically a acrylic tie-dye base with a Dawn Power Wash Overspray. I really like how this tumbler turned out. It's super fun for spring and summer. It's full of bright colors. Um, if you guys have already watched my acrylic tie-dye tumbler tutorial, this is kind of a recap of that with the added step of the Dawn Power Wash. So if you guys are ready to see how I completed this tumbler, let's get started. All right, guys, so we are going to start with a prepped tumbler that is spray painted with matte white paint. Then we are going to use some neon paint colors. I have the little pack of Master's Touch that you can get at uh, Hobby Lobby, I believe, maybe Michael's. They do sell a few of these in the larger containers, but sometimes the larger containers are hard to find. So I just get these small ones and then I have them all. <laughs> I use really small paint brushes and I start by making an X of where I want my center shape to go. And then I will start from the center and pull the paint outward. This is how you get the feathered ends. And this way the ends are a little bit thinner. And I will just kind of go around and I do make the edges a little bit uneven. And then the next color we're going to do is yellow. And we're going to overlap this pink just a little bit. And you guys can see that when we overlap the pink, where the pink and the yellow meet, it creates orange. So we are taking it back to elementary school art of what colors you get when you blend other colors. And I do the same thing. I just start from the middle and pull outwards. And then I will go back and add a thicker line of the yellow because we want to be sure we have enough of the color to blend the next color. So I am just pulling it outwards. And I will move my tumbler around just so I can get a good angle on pulling the paint. And the next color we're going to do is blue. And we are going to do the same thing we did with the yellow. So we're going to start the blue in on the yellow a little bit. And this will make our green. The same thing as all the other colors. We are going to start from the yellow and then pull outward. And if you get some paint globs on your paintbrush and it makes the paint a little bit thicker, just wipe off your paintbrush. And when I apply these colors, I don't use a lot of pressure. I am just lightly wisping the paint on the cup. I said in my original um, tie-dye tutorial that it reminds me of the movie Stepmom when she's teaching her stepdaughter how to paint that whoosh 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 um, sound that is pretty much what I play in my head when I am doing these tumblers. And 
and I'm doing the same thing I did with the yellow. I am just making the blue part a little bit thicker. That way when we go in with our next color, I have enough of the blue to work with so that there's still a good bit of blue showing. So just make your tie-dye burst as big or small as you want. There's no right or wrong way how to do this. So after the blue, we are going to take our pink again and go back in the blue and pull outward. And this is going to create our purple. And if you are going to do this, make sure you have plenty of time because it is a little time consuming. I do really enjoy doing it though because painting is my first love. So getting to actually play with paint on a tumbler is pretty fun. And again, switch up your tumbler positions if you need to. But make sure that you are having it elevated so that the paint won't wipe off on your cloth that's underneath or the table or whatever it is you're using. You don't want it to smudge. And because we don't want it to smudge, some of the positions that I hold the cup are a little awkward. And after the pink, we are going to take our yellow again and go back in with the pink. So then we will get orange again. And I did go back and any little white areas that I saw in the pink, instead of going back with pink, I actually went back in with yellow. So it gives it more of a tie-dye effect, I guess. Um, so the colors start to blend a little bit and just breaks up the pink a little bit more. I don't think I did that with my first video. I just went in with the same color, but I did like how it turned out when I went in with the different colors. And then once your tumbler is at this stage, we are going to go back in and use the other three colors that we have. And this will just kind of accent the colors that are already there. And don't forget your bottoms. The bottom of the tumbler, I didn't do it as detailed as the regular tumbler. I knew that this was going to be power washed, so I wasn't, you know, super anal about how the bottom looked. I just wanted it to have that same tie-dye effect, though. So I just went in with the three colors, the pink, the yellow, and the blue.
So now we are going to go back in with our second set of colors. So I'm going to take the orange and wherever the orange is, which is between the pink and the yellow, I am just going to drag some orange through the orange that is already there. We're not going to apply as much paint as we did with the original colors. This is basically just kind of accenting the color that has already formed. So it just helps the two colors kind of blend a little bit better together. And I do make some little wispies a little bit longer than others just to give it not such a uniform look. And then I did go and brighten my center a little bit with some more pink. It was a little lighter than I wanted. So then we're going to take our next color, which is green. And we're going to go in between the yellow and the blue and just accent that green that is already there a little bit. And when I go in with these secondary colors, I do pull outwards and inwards so that the green goes into the blue and it goes into the yellow. And then I did the same thing that I did with the um, yellow earlier. So any little spots where there may have been white in the blue section, I went in with the green and with the yellow too. So that way it looks like the green was starting a little bit closer into the yellow and it breaks up the yellow a little bit so it's not one solid band of yellow it has a little bit of green and a little bit of orange mixed in with it and then the next color we're going to use is purple and this is going to go in between the blue and the pink And it's the same thing as before. We are just pulling the purple into the pink and into the blue. And if there were any more white spots in the blue, I would just pull the purple through it. Again, just so it's not a solid band of blue. It will have some purple, green, yellow, all mixed in. And you guys can see from this angle that I'm not really going too far into the blue. I'm just adding a little bit of that purple just to accent it. So the secondary colors are not going to be as thick as the first three colors that we used.
And when I'm finished with all of the colors, I just kind of go in and add little swipes if I think I need to. And once this dries, I am going to epoxy it and then we are ready to power wash it. So this is after it has been epoxied and I did sand the rim so that we have that stainless showing just to make sure that the next layer of epoxy really sticks to it well. And then this is the power wash. So anywhere you spray the power wash, whatever is underneath is going to stay. Wherever the power wash does not hit when you spray paint it, that area is going to be whatever color your spray paint is. I am just using matte white. So I want my burst to stay that way. So I am going to spray it all with power wash. And then the opposite side, I do want to be more white because that is where I am going to apply my water slide. And you do have to work fairly quick with it. I mean, you guys can see that I kind of take my time, <laughs> but I don't let it drip down the cup. I do kind of move it around And then I take my bucket of water, I don't use my hose, and I just pour a little bit of this water over the tumbler. So this was the first attempt. I didn't wanna add too much of the spray paint because I really didn't wanna cover up the tie dye, but I did need to add a little bit more white. So I let this tumbler dry and then I added a little bit more power wash to it. Um, don't wipe it with a towel because you will get lint on it if it's not dry. So I just set it to a side for a little bit, then it's dry and I just reapplied the power wash. This time, not adding so much power wash on the back because I did want that area to be more white. And then I spray paint it again. and then pour the water over it. And I did spray one more time with the power wash because I just wanted to be sure that my water slide image would show up really well. And I will tell you guys that I did take a Q-tip and some acetone and did remove a little bit of the spray paint um, that way I had some more of the tie-dye showing through but once you're happy with how it looks you can either spray seal it with clear spray paint or you can epoxy it one more time and then we will be ready to apply our water slide I did decide to epoxy my tumbler this time because I added some micro fine glitter in my epoxy so it would sparkle under the water slide. 
So I am going to put my water slide in the white blank space. It has been sitting for a little while with a wet backing. So I have my wet paper towel handy and you're just going to damp the cup so that you can move the water slide around once you get it placed. So you're just going to slide the water slide onto your tumbler and just kind of move it around until you get it placed how you want it. And then I am going to take my microfiber cloth and we are going to squeeze out all of the water from underneath the water slide. You don't want to epoxy if there is still water trapped up underneath the slide. So make sure that you get it all out. I will typically let my water slides sit for about 30 minutes to an hour. You can usually feel the water slide and tell if it's dry or not. Some people like to wait overnight, which is fine, but typically 30 minutes to an hour should be fine. They should be dry by then. And then once it is dry, I will put it back on my turner for another layer or two of epoxy. And then it is finished. So I love how this tumbler turned out. I hope you guys did too. It is so fun for spring and summer. I hope that you guys try this maybe with different colors too would be really cool. So I can't wait to see what you guys make. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my Facebook group that is linked in the description. Thanks for watching!